I am getting so many questions these days from people whose visas are stuck in administrative processing. I hope that's not the case for you, but if it is, you definitely want to stick around because I'm going to be sharing with you today the strategies and tactics that you need to take to get your visa out of administrative processing in 2023. Just this morning, I had a conversation with a Persian woman who lives uh, on the East Coast, and she was telling me this horrible story about her husband. He had gone to a visa interview about six months ago, and she was hopeful that he would get his visa approved. Um, she has a four-year-old child who has has separated from from her hus her her hus from her her father, and it just broke my heart to hear the pain in her voice, and um, it was so sad. And it's just horrible what they're doing to people all over the world, these consulates. They put people in administrative processing. They don't care why or what they're doing. And the, the, the difficult thing is that they don't tell you how long it's gonna take. And they don't tell you what they're checking. They don't tell you why you're put in administrative processing. And you look around and all the people that applied for visas are on the same time as you. They're getting approved left and right. It's so incredibly frustrating. And I want you to know that you're not alone if you're suffering in this situation. And today we're going to dive into, oh, thank you, buddy. We had one of my uh, good friends and old clients who's looking very lean and mean in this picture below. Um, Hussein Salama Barack Obama is what I call him. He joined us today. <clears throat> um, but the, the question is, what do we do about all these delays? Um, and I'm going to answer them for you. In just a moment. <clears throat> the first thing I think that you need to understand when it comes to administrative processing delays is that there are only two things that are known about an administrative processing delay of a visa. The first thing that is known is that you have completed the visa interview, okay? If your visa is stuck in administrative processing, that means that your visa interview was conducted. And that's not a small thing because for many people, the challenge in their case is just to get an interview. They are stuck at the NVC or waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and they can't get a visa interview. So if you're in administrative processing, the number one thing that you know is that your visa interview is complete. The second thing that you need to know is that no final decision has been made on your immigration case. None. You're just waiting. And I have a guest today who's going to talk to us about his situation. I'm going to ask him to join now. And here he is. You. Right. We have you live on YouTube. My friend, are you there? Hey, Josh, I'm here. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for giving me time. Yeah. So what I want to do, uh, uh, really, does your camera work? Do you, are you comfortable joining? with my camera? Ah, uh, sure. Okay. There he is. Hello, brother. Yes, sir. Tell me your, tell me your name again. I'm Tommy. 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 And where, where are you coming at to, coming at us today? Uh, I'm or, from Andhra Pradesh, Bengal. Okay. Fantastic. So, um, well, let's get right into it. Tell me what's going on and how I can help you. Uh, I came to India in September 2022, yeah. and I went for a visa uh, interview on October 12, 2022. And after that, they asked me some documents where I already submitted within a week. What kind of visa after... are you seeking? Sorry? What type of visa are you seeking? Uh, it's a H-1B, initial H-1B stamping. Okay. So let me just ask a few more questions so I can understand. Okay. Were you living Were you living in the U.S. 
before you went to the visa appointment? Yes. And you were working on an H-1B visa before you came to India for this time, right? Yes. So you basically came to get your visa to renewed? No, it's an initial uh, initial stamping. Initial I was, I, yeah, I was, uh, I did my master's and later I was uh, with, on OPT for three years. Later, my H-1 was picked up. Uh, it's on December 2021, my H-1 was approved. Okay. And uh, I came to India on September 2022. Uh, I haven't did my initial stamping until December 2022. Okay. I understand. And um, what do you, what, what's your field of work or what's your occupation, your field of study? Uh, it's an IT company. I work there as a uh, development specialist. Excellent. Okay. So you go to your visa interview and what happens? Yeah, they asked me either I have a client letter or not. Uh, as I was working as in-house, I don't have any client letter. Okay. Uh, uh, later, they said that I'm helping for some client, uh, etc. And they asked me what is my roles and responsibilities and my pay steps, all my all the stuff. Where I haven't carried all my pay steps from day one with my company. So they requested me the day one, uh, uh, the day one to the till date of uh, every pay step from the company where I was working. Okay. So I I submitted all those uh, which was required. And uh, even my HR also did, my HR and my lawyer team also sent the uh, same documents to the immigration team. Where some people uh, from US were contacted uh, Sage IT uh, HR and asked a few questions about my profile. So they answered all those questions as well. Yes, they asked me, they asked what, are, what is my roles and responsibilities in my okay. company and uh, where is my house address and etc so these are all basic questions there is no complicated in that okay so, so i was waiting uh, almost 250 days after submitting my uh, all the documents or whatever the questions they asked till now there is uh, no change uh, in the status check like the cisa uh, where i am uh -huh. checking every week and even i am sending an emails so there right. is no there is no update uh, from October 12th. And have you been so working it's remotely? almost 250 days. Yeah, have you been working remotely? No, I'm not working as a, no, because it's an in-house, I'm working as a direct client, so I'm, I don't have any uh, permission to work outside of the country, so I am not working after that. Well, that sounds incredibly frustrating. Yes. And, um, what um what questions do you have for me or how can we help you i know you had so, some idea about getting another appointment that that was an interesting point to me now as uh, as i'm uh, checking that either i can keep an emergency visa slot or any uh, h1b visa slot so that i can go back if i have an opportunity and and if we go there, they will be asking few questions or I may have a chance to chat with them with the, like if they give time to us. So asking and check whether whether uh, are missing any documents or we need to submit any other documents. Mm. At least at least there should be some updates on my status check, right? It's from October 12th. I'm not receiving any email or any updates uh, after yeah. that. So the idea that you had, this is what, what caught my interest. The idea that you had was to get an appointment for another H-1B visa. Yes. And then go back to the consulate for that appointment, but then to use that appointment as an opportunity to strike up a dialogue with them to yes. see if you can resolve the delay. Yes. How would you get the visa interview? No, I. How do I get means? Uh, I mean, you've already had the visa interview. Yeah, I already had visa interview, but uh, I I have a question that can I book another interview? Is there any possibility? Well, let me let me respond to this um, idea. Uh, your visa is stuck in administrative processing. They requested documents from you and information from you 
and you promptly responded with all the requested documents and information, right? Yes, I did. You don't have any doubt that your response was thorough, right? Yes. They didn't ask you for a document and you didn't give them the document, right? Yes. So the question is really, would this strategy of going and getting an appointment for a visa, for an H-1B visa, and then using the visa to say, hey, what's going on with my case? Uh, is there a way we can get it resolved? And to, you know, to have a conversation with them, would that strategy, even if you could do it, would that be an effective way to get your visa resolved? And okay. let me share my thoughts with you. I don't think that this would work. Because I think that the reason that your visa is delayed is not something that an officer has control over. Okay. And I think that if you were to do that, I, first of all, I don't know how you would do that. But let's say that you actually did do that and you had an interview with the officer and you said, hey, officer, here's my case. It's been in administrative processing for a long time. What's going on? Then I think what the officer would say is, they would look at the computer screen and they would say, I'm sorry, but according to um, my my information, your case is an administrative processing and you need to undergo blah, blah, blah. It's going to take a certain number of days and you should wait for additional information. They would give you the same general information that you that you've had in the past. So your goal. I mean, I think what you're thinking is that the officer has discretion to and the authority to approve your case when it's in administrative processing to review your application and make a decision. And what I'm suggesting is that <clears throat> administrative processing is something that is beyond the officer's authority, that they would look oh. at your case in the system and they'd say, sorry, you're in administrative processing, which you already know, and you can't there's nothing I can do. I'm very, very sorry. This happens often at the visa interviews. What the visa interviews, the officer will say, I'm sorry, I wish I could approve your case, but according to my records, you're in administrative processing and you need, I have to put you in 221G. Yes. So I think that there are logistical problems with this approach. How would you get the visa interview? How would you arrange it? Could you, could you do? Could you do this because it's for a visa that's already been interviewed? Um, yeah. Secondly, if you were to do this, if you were to get a visa interview, then I don't believe that you would uh, be able to resolve your case by doing that. All okay. right. I don't think it would work. I mean, you can try and do it. It doesn't cost you anything other than your time. But I don't think that's the solution to your problem. Okay. Uh, I think, and I know this may seem frustrating, but I think there are two ways out. The first way is to do what you have been doing, and that is to continue to wait for your visa to get processed. Okay. And the second thing that you could do is you could file a writ of mandamus lawsuit. And this is something where me and my team could come in. We could take on your case. We could file the lawsuit. We could challenge the delay in court. And that legal challenge would force the agencies to do what their job, to process the paperwork and make a decision on your case. I mean, you've done nothing wrong. You deserve this visa. You were, you were approved by USCIS, yes. right? Yes. The only thing that they have to do is process the paperwork, which is what they're not doing. Yes. And to, to, to clear up the holdup, the mandamus lawsuit is the way to go, unless you can wait it out. I mean, you've already waited. It's almost a year or maybe it's two, 250 days. It's almost sure. it's going to be a year. Yeah. I mean, my concern is if you keep waiting, you may end up just wasting time and and maybe you might god forbid you might even be at risk of losing the opportunity in the job after getting a master's in the u.s that's crazy yeah i haven't did anything wrong i was working almost like 
I was genuine with all the paperwork. I did uh, step by step process. Yeah. I don't understand why it was going this way, and uh, this is very tough time. I have to pay my bills over there, and even my, I am paying my car rent and apartment rent. Horrible. And car things, all these things are going to happen without any as uh, job. So I don't want to put my credit down. So I was trying to do all my payments uh, regularly. So even I am so frustrated. I can't pay any more from now. I was having yeah. some savings. I want to keep on hold until I go there. Well, listen. I, I'm really sorry that you're in the situation you're in. I think it's very unfair, and you're somebody who is a huge would be a huge um, benefit for the United States. You're highly educated, skilled person um, with a job offer who could make a massive contribution. Um, and I'm sorry that they're making you wait. And, um, you know, um, after after we finish this conversation, I, I'd like to follow up with you and have a conversation with you to see if you might be interested in considering a mandamus lawsuit and whether we can help you and so on. So if, if, you, if you move forward, uh, uh, what will be the financial uh, things here? Well, um, you know, we're live on YouTube, and so it's probably not the best time to, uh, to get into that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a free strategy session uh, with my team, and we can talk to you about how much it costs and, um, and how the details and how that works. But I'd, I'd love to see you back in the U.S. at your job. That's what I'd like to see. Yeah, um, even uh, and you know, the other thing that's on my mind is that if you have a master's and you get an H one B visa, as you know, the H one B visa is a stepping stone that leads to a career in the U.S. Often, people with H one B visas and masters in STEM, their companies will petition for them to get green cards. And so, if you were to lose the H one B visa, my fear is that, you know, you're on track to maybe a life in the U.S. And so it's not just the H-1B visa that's at stake. It's really a whole career path in, in the United States, which is something that you deserve after getting a master's. So anyway, um, what I'd like to do is after we end, after, you know, we end this, I'd like to follow up with you to see, talk more about the specifics okay sure sure any other, um, any other okay any other questions for you before we before we leave no i was following uh, you on um, the facebook uh, i'm seeing good results from you ren uh, let's uh, let's hope uh, let's move yeah. forward if things goes well okay, i will wait me. for you for the details Okay, thank you for your time, and uh, I'm sorry you're in the situation you're in, but uh, I'd love to help you. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay, bye now. Nice day. All right. I want to thank Kanmi for joining us and asking his question. I hope that his situation and my answer was valuable to all of you, um, and I'm going to answer a few more questions from YouTube now and from Facebook and everywhere else. Um, all right, who's got questions? Let's see here. All right, Harvey Peterson, hello. I had my interview in Tunisia. I have been informed by a consular officer that my visa application is being processed, 221 GDS 5535. Since my visa interview day, it has been 149 days till now, five months. What can I do to facilitate processing immigrant type visa, type immigrant visa? Well, Harvey, first of all, I'm sorry that you're in the situation you're in. But um, as our last guest suggested, um, when you have a visa delay, there are only two ways out. One way is to wait it out. And you've been waiting for 149 days. That's a long time. Um, and if you don't want to wait it out and you, and you give up, at some point, the waiting becomes so painful that you can't take it anymore. 
And at that point, you stand up and say, I'm ready to take action. I'm not going to do this anymore. I want a result. And at that point, the solution is a mandamus lawsuit. Um, this is what me and my firm and I handle. We help fight to for each of you so that you can get the results that you deserve. You deserve your visa within a reasonable period of time. And they're not processing it. Um, so it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. Here's a question for Mohammed Al Tamimi. First of all, Mohammed, thank you for joining us and thank you for your question. I'm going to try to answer it as best I can. It says here, hi, sir, can you help me with 212A3B? I was refused under the section. I was working for a U.S. Army as an interpreter. I've done nothing wrong. And now I've applied for I-130. The thing is, how can I get myself approved? I'm from Iraq. Well, first of all, again, Mohammed, thank you for your question. And I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that your visa was refused. Um, and I'm even more sorry to hear that it was refused under 212A3B. This particular section of the immigration law relates to, it's what we call the terrorism related inadmissibility ground or trig. And the one thing I know about it is that every time I have a client who's denied under the so-called terrorism related inadmissibility grounds, the person is astonished to hear that they've been accused or denied based on terrorism. We think of terrorism as violence and violent political people, Osama bin Laden. Carlos the Jackal, um, these sorts of things. And most people who are caught up and are accused and are denied or refused based on terrorism have are not violent at all. They would never hurt anyone. And it's they, they, they're falsely accused of terrorism. But nevertheless, even if this is your situation and it's very unfair, in my experience as an immigration lawyer, there is no strategy that I know to overcome the terrorism-related and admissibility ground. So if you're refused under 212A3B, unfortunately, it means that you're unlikely to be able to live in the United States. Now, in your situation, your visa was refused under 212A3B, um, and then you applied for uh, you filed a visa petition for I-130. Maybe you're you're married to a U.S. citizen or you have a family member who petitioned for you. But unfortunately, if you were denied under 212A3B for one visa, you're very likely to not be denied under 212A3B for the other visa. Um, and what's even worse is it says in your question that you worked as an interpreter for the U.S. Army. I don't want to thank you for the work that you did. Um, it's a horrible, horrible scenario. And I, I don't have any advice that can lead you to successful result other than the only thing I can tell you is how sorry I am and how how unfortunate it is and how I wish that I could do more to help you. And I want to thank you for your question. What other questions do people have? How can I be of help? Um, let's try this Facebook user. Thank you for sharing your time with us. I had my interview a month ago in a third country. The consulate gave me 221G and told me to submit my CV because of my profession as a physicist. Kept my passport. What do you think, Josh? Oh, I think that's very, very difficult because when you go to a third country, I've seen people do this. Let's say you're from, um, you're from Mexico. And you think, okay, well, I'm going to go to another country to get my visa processed faster. And they'll go to, um, you know, um, I'm just making this up. They'll go to uh, Guyana. They'll, they'll find a visa appointment available in Guyana. And they'll say, okay, I'm going to go get my visa processed. And they go to Guyana, a third country. They take their passport. And then they're stuck in our third country that they don't have any connection to, like Guyana. And then you, you're, you know, you're Mexican and you're in Guyana. They have your passport. You can't, you can't leave, but they're not processing your visa. So it's a horrible, 
horrible situation. And the question that we have from our friend today is what to do about it. Um, and the, the answer, go, I sound like a broken record, but there are two ways out of administrative processing. Number one is to wait it out. Um, most administrative processing delays should be resolved within a couple of months, within 60 days. Uh, but what happens is the waiting often just leads to more waiting. And as the days go by and the weeks go by and then the months go by, uh, it becomes kind of overwhelming. Um, and you become so frustrating, you, you don't know what to do. So that leads to the second solution for administrative processing delays, and that is to take action, to file a writ of mandamus lawsuit in federal court against the immigration agency. This is precisely what I do to help so many people uh, who are stuck in administrative processing. Last year alone, my team filed more than 500 lawsuits in federal court to help people just like you, people whose visas deserve to be approved, whose visas deserve to be processed within a reasonable period of time, but they're getting nowhere. Um, and this is what we do to help people. So I would say try to wait it out, but don't wait too long. And if you're, if you're, if you're serious about getting your visa processed, then uh, reach out to us and we'd be happy to set up a free strategy session with our team to talk to you about the costs and the workings of a mandamus lawsuit and how it might help you. Um, so what other questions do we have? I'm um, here. We have Jimmy. Anybody seen my question? I have not seen your question. Ah, here we go. Hi, I'm from Romania and living in Germany. How much does it take I-140, I-130 other workers? Um, well, um, that's a good question. The costs for our legal services depend on the case, and we need to know a little more about that. And if you want to reach out to us, we'd be happy to offer a free consultation or strategy session to you. If we can't, if we can't help you because you need help with something that is a service we don't provide, we try to refer you to someone. Um, let's go to e -Mora immortals uh, thank you for joining us it says i had my my interview on march 7th after the interview the consulate kept my passport put me in administrative process with no documents request on the case status it shows refused with a long message okay what do we do here more in may it turned to refuse with a short message i've reached out to the consulate to know if it's still an ap or not Okay, so let me see if I can answer your question. First of all, again, I'm sorry to hear that you're in this situation. Um, refused administrative processing, 221G, these all mean the same thing. Reached out on legal net, and they confirmed that it's still an AP. I don't even like the term AP because I think it's misleading. I don't even like the term refused because that's very misleading. Basically, just think of it this way. You had your visa interview and no final decision has been made. That's all we know. The question is what to do about it. And I think that um, the key thing to understand is that we have more. Um, is WOM the next solution? It's definitely the next solution. Um, I don't think that you should wait. I think you should take action. I want to put my email address on here. Um, this is the email address you should use. All right. Intake at jgoldlaw.com. If you send an email to that address, I want you to put in the subject line, no more waiting. No more waiting. Put that in the subject line and put a phone number where we can reach you and i'll send you a link where you can schedule a free strategy session with our team to discuss um she says she sent several he or she says she sent several inquiries to ombudsman nbc consulate no definitive answer yeah it's mandamus time it's time to stop waiting it's time to stop if you use the ombudsman nbc legal net the 
all these sorts of things. All they're going to do is come back to you and they're going to say, thank you for your inquiry. Um, according to our records, your case is an administrative processing. Please allow additional time for your visa to be blah, 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 blah. It's not going to go anywhere. Mandamus lawsuit will get your visa unstuck quickly. If you need help, reach out to me. Here's the email. Here it is. And I'll be back with more information soon.